So guys, welcome back to a second video that isn't the Iron Man series, by the way. And uh, today I bring back, you know, due to popular demand, the cold one, the legendary. Before we get into the death mechanic, the core of this, you know, discussion, we're gonna gloss over the other stuff. So starting off in the first part of this discussion, we're just gonna briefly talk about their section from words from the support team. A lot of people actually think that reporting bots, you know, reporting scammers and all that doesn't seem to work. You know, I've heard people say, oh yeah, I report like this guy for scamming or botting like 40 different times and he's never banned. Well, they actually talked about the numbers and yeah, it really, it really does show, you know, that it does work. Yeah, it just basically showed the numbers that your reports do matter. Yeah, let's get on to the actual proposed content changes that Jagex wants to make. So a lot of these involve uh, dealing with people that are item scamming and how to deal with commonly botted places. So the first one's box traps that they want to change. So they want to propose actually making a quest requirement for it, right? So they want to, to complete Eagle's Peak to use the box traps. So box traps are only for, I believe, Chinchampas, right, Cole? Uh, yeah, Chinchampas and I think ferrets but or weasels or something, but nobody catches those. Have you ever been to any chin spot that isn't the uh, diary spot? You're pretty much going to see like botters everywhere. So I'm not really sure if this Eagle's Peak requirement is really going to stop that many botters because Eagle's Peak is actually a really easy quest. But you got to remember, if you look at the paragraph above this, it says that about 293,000 bots were banned in just February alone. So this buys like legitimate players a bit more time to catch them without a bot being there. It, you can't get bots out of there completely without putting some ridiculous requirement on that. And then you also have to remember there are some people that like having a level 3 skiller account, and you don't want to exactly exclude them from this content, because it is a money maker for Hunter, otherwise there's not really much ways for them to train it effectively for profit, like that's it. You know what I'd love to see though, uh, for any of these like particular changes, I think they can actually probably do a count or something from like, how many you know bots were catching chins pre uh, nerf and post nerf like you know compare the numbers because like i would love to see you know how these proposed uh nerves actually impact you know botting activity because yeah you showing know, the numbers thinking about that i would love to see that kind yeah of yeah exactly i would love to see that because you know if if this happens right this nerf happens and then they actually show the data and it and it's working great then you know that would justify more of these proposals in the future you know make it easier next time okay so the next one is like super i would say not even controversial i don't even know why this is not even a thing right the anti uh, dragon and dragon fire shields right well not even completing the dragon slayer quest because they're not even telling you to complete it so like peers and stuff you don't actually gain the defense experience they said you just have to get to the point where you can you know equip the shield and then you're good to go so you actually don't have to worry about you know the defense xp that you get from the quest and if you're at the point where you can be killing green dragons i think you should have 32 quest points at that point anyway exactly and yeah i will say there is one issue i did find and i only stumbled across this accidentally because i've been yeah. playing the dead man seasonal for the past couple of days <laughs> yeah uh, I actually went down to Red Dragons and I bought an anti-dragon fire shield from the GE. And I have however many quest points the Herbler quest gives you. Now, if they put that requirement in, that means if I wanted to do that for a moneymaker, I'd have to do a bunch of quests, go through dangerous areas, instead of just going straight to a Brimhaven dungeon. Yeah, and so... you also don't really have to worry about bots in dead man mode, so I don't think this change should be put into dead man mode. That's a discussion for that community. Yeah, to get yeah, into. probably uh, dead man mode. But the uh, Major Arena shop, though, yeah, that one's definitely heavily bought it man those cosmic runes are just always bought out but they said they wanted you to complete the major arena mini quest so yeah that would definitely stop a lot of botting in his tracks but of course it's gonna stop low level iron mans and stuff you know from utilizing it i mean what do you think is that a fair trade-off so we'll just go back to the major arena one not the major arena the magic guild one yeah that change is fine because by the time you have that magic uh, level i think even as an, as an iron man you should be close if not at 49 crafting i think it is to do the uh, the hand in the sand quest yeah people usually rush crafting fairly early on i would say like uh, in terms of immersion like why that quest in order to you know buy runes right doesn't really make sense but hey as long as it stops botters i'm in 
they could have the NPC say, I reserve my stock for those who have helped my friend or something like that. Or yeah, dude, uh, Bert can actually say, oh, actually, I am uh, working together with the uh, Magic Guild shop. You know, we are in a partnership. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, what about Mage, Mage Arena shop? Yeah, that's a tough one. So that shop is where a lot of Iron Man early game have access to not only cosmic runes, but law runes as well. And nature runes, but... Ali Morrison okay. also sells them too, so... I'm but, actually going to check something real quick. I'm going to teleport over to Edgeville to double check. Sure, because man. A I'm plus for effort, bro. Because I'm fairly certain the, uh, what do you call it, the Zamorak Mage in the Wilderness sells law runes. So I already know an answer to the Cosmic Runes. Like, yeah, the store stock's 20 at a time, but it's always bought out, even for Iron Man. But there's a decent alternative if you're willing to go out into the Wilderness in the first place. Uh, there's three Cosmic Rune spawns by Ice Giants in the northwest of the Wilderness, right by that gate on the Ice Plateau. So there is an option there. It's much slower. But at the same time as an Iron Man, you should be getting stuff not from buying from shops in the first place, even though we all do it anyway, out of convenience. So there is an option there, and unfortunately, the Zamorak Mage in the Wilderness does not sell law runes. I did use Mage Arena Shop early on as well, so you're really only having law rune issues, maybe for your first few days. Okay, so we got next thing, Zap Staves. Yeah, so, so really, the only issue would be honestly there's not that much of an issue like and you're probably going to be using the diary stocks and whatnot so it's not yeah it's not even really an issue for anybody other than bots and there is another spot to buy battle staffs as well if you're not using your dailies bobby yeah. the shop guess what bots yeah don't go you can the also do the you know wizard guild as well but yeah honestly low level accounts that are going to be buying battle staffs only bots really would, would really be utilizing it i would say Okay, so we got the Wine of Zamorak one. This one's uh, actually interesting. Alright, so getting 500 total level, you have to think, when was the last time you saw a bot with 500 total level? They will not really have access to the second floor. Now, the first floor, they suggested having the uh, the monks attack you. Yeah, yeah, uh, I forgot If there's, to if there's that. any up, then you won't be able to telegrab it. So you'd have to kill the level 17 and 22 mobs in order to do it. Now, yeah, it does take away, like, you know, a really early level money-making method of grabbing wines. Yeah, which I do. I I remember a long time ago, back in 2004, when RuneScape 2 was first released. I had a friend who was 70 plus herblor and could make ranging potions, and you know I was pretty cool with him. I was a really low level noob with like 40 magic, and he's like, "Hey, you want to make some money and get some magic experience too?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." He threw me 100 law runes out of good faith, and he paid me for it. So that is a way to make money for low level accounts. I think Zami wants to like about 3,000 each or something. Correct me if I'm wrong. Low level players can't really make amazing money at all because bots usually camp most of the spots anyways mm -hmm. so you know now that you mentioned the the monks attacking you that that would definitely i would say make it even worse than it is now in terms of you know legitimate low level players wanting to make money off of this even though it will effectively stop like 99 percent of these type of bots but on the same note if you get all of your stats to 30 then you can access the second floor yeah or even like a little less than 30. It's like so an average yeah th th that's a that's a big if though because you know like low level players man you're gonna have a hard time finding a novice player that's just gonna have all around 30 stats you know in in the beginning so okay uh mage training arena enchanting table oh okay so mage training arena enchanting table. Uh, but i can't say this shit. <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> all right so next thing is the enchanting chamber in Mage Training Arena. Oh yes, that place is infested with Dragonstone motherfucking bots. God damn it, man! I already know a better solution for this than what they're proposing. Yeah, just get rid of the Dragonstones and change the way the game works. So yeah, if you were to like enchant the shape that's listed in the bottom right corner, you get the same points as if you were to enchant a Dragonstone. Yeah, honestly, I I agree with you. I've always thought about it that way, man. Okay, yeah. pickpocketing NPCs, this is probably the, the biggest one in terms of, you know, combating, you know, botting and stuff that we should be talking about. So, uh, a lot of people seem to think that this nerf to RD Knights is gonna, like, kill the meta, you know, this, this great training method. But honestly, it is not. What this is effectively gonna be doing is stopping people from auto-clicking. So, that form of botting of auto-clicking will not be as effective once this poll uh once this suggestion actually makes it into the game they suggested coin purse but i've got a better idea just by literally looking at an npc and if you can pull it up on screen when you're 
you know, editing this, yeah. I want you to pull up Yanil Watchman on the old school RuneScape. Theme yeah, just like app. junk shit. <laughs> yeah, just pull it up because what it gives you when you steal from it is 60 coins and one loaf of bread. So the only change you need to make to Artie Knights is make it so the loot is 50 coins and one loaf of bread. I, I don't know the exact source, but you know, some uh, pretty reliable people have told me, even people at 99th Thieving, once this uh, update passes through theoretically, they're only going to be losing a few thousand thieving experience an hour tops. So you're still going to be getting 100k plus, 200k plus, you know, for you regular players that are just spam clicking, watching TV shows, you're still going to pretty much get the same exact rates. So honestly, there's no reason for you guys to panic and, you know, rush 99th thieving right now because you're not going to lose out on much anyways, regardless if this passes or not. So, so for those of you that did not know, the death mechanics was never really the way it, it is now you know for a very long time i mean you know since early like early 2000s runescape and uh before corporal beast update for old school runescape we had the classic death mechanic where if you died pretty much everything but your three most important you know most valuable items uh, based on out value or something and maybe if you had protected from item would be kept Everything else in your inventory and what you wore would, would go on the ground. And then once it touches the ground, you literally have two minutes to get your stuff back. The first minute, people can actually see those items after that. And then on the second minute, your items would disappear once it reaches that if you didn't pick it up or nobody did. So that's how, that's how crazy it was. Back then, if you died, unless you had your friend with you or something, I would say in most cases you would lose those items like honestly even like skilling activities you know, and you die like wow yeah even then you have a low chance of getting it back which is pretty crazy if you think about it even skilling activities back then you know like with randoms and whatnot but I guess in, in today's case randoms not be a problem but yeah if you died doing dangerous uh, skilling there are some dangerous skilling then with the original death mechanics you probably wouldn't be able to get your stuff back yeah, for example, for Canic Mine, you probably would not get your stuff back. So a lot of people, you know, are scared because we don't know what they're proposing and maybe they're going to bring the old one back. But they're definitely not going to bring the old one back. Alright, so me and Colt have similar idea to, you know, the alternative to the current death mechanics. So I'm going to let, you know, Colt pitch his first and then, mm -hmm. you know, I'll talk about mine. Alright. So the change that we discussed for altering the death mechanic slightly is still having the hour death timer put in place. However, there's going to be a cost if you should die. Let's say that the amount that you lose on death is, for example, sake 100 million. Now to claim this uh, loss off the floor, you'd have to interact with, let's say for right now, a gravestone and pay the gravestone a coin value that's going to be no higher than 1 million coins. So the amount that you have to pay would be either 1 million or 10% of the value loss. So in this case, 10% of 100 million is 10 million, but 1 million is lower than that. So that's where the ceiling would stop, and you pay 1 mil to get your items back. Now, let's say you die with 5 million as a risk. 10% of that is 500k, so you would pay 500k to reclaim your items. Now, this would definitely bring a bit of risk involved with actually dying, or like, let's say... Uh, like, you know, AFKing for too long or, like, you know, putting up the wrong prayer when you're bossing. So you'll actually have to pay for your mistakes, whereas now if you die, it's like, oh, LOL, I have to go back. And you spend, like, two minutes getting back over there. So I feel like this would be, like, a fair punishment. I'd like to hear what your uh, variation of, is of this as well, off of what we discussed. Wait, can you elaborate? Is it going to get a gravestone? Because that's I'm one of the biggest concerns. Yeah, I'm saying like if we decide to use it, the gravestone is just an idea for a placeholder right now. Uh, I don't know whether you'd have to pay like you know as soon as you die and respawn in let's say Lumbridge, Falador, or where not, or if you've got to bring the coins with you to your point of death in order to reclaim them. That's something that can be toyed around with, but there should just be just a cost on your death, whether it be paying after you die or paying when you get back to your point of death. All right, so one of the biggest fears, you know, when you die, there's like a timer on these items right before it disappears so would you say that you know with this for your you know alternative would you say that should you die you know and whatever's holding your items should it have a time limit or should it just keep staying until you pay it off and you get your stuff back mm, i still think it should have an hour 
to uh, reclaim your stuff because that's enough time to get down there from whatever task you're doing. And let's say you disconnect for a moment and come back in, you'll still be able to get there with an hour. Like having an hour timer is perfectly fine. All right, so just to be clear, you mm -hmm. want to have a maximum of 1 million GP fee if you die. Correct. And items are going to stay wherever it is going to stay. Should it be on the ground that you originally died in or, you know, in like some sort of like a facile, it should stay for one hour. Regardless. Yeah, it'll stay where you died for one hour. Okay. All right. And then, you know, the fee range is going to be from 0 GB to 1 million GP, you know, depending on whatever the situation is what your gear value and all that stuff exactly because okay. we we talked about this before so um the only thing that I, I might diverge a bit is probably how much uh the gp cost is going to be like and scaling it i i agree that one million gp should probably be the highest that uh, somebody should pay should you die but maybe the scaling you know from like zero to one million gp uh, i would say maybe a, a bit different because you said 10% of whatever you die with. Yeah, it's just an example rate for right now. All right. Because, like, I was feeling... Because if you do 10%, that's pretty crazy. Because, like... So, for example, right? If, if using your uh, percentage, if someone's wearing 10 mil gear, I don't think they have that much money, right? So, like, if they die, they're going to have to pay 1 mil. That, that's pretty hefty. Yeah, it's pretty harsh. You uh, can even make the percentage, like, 5%, 2%, 1%. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, feeling, I was feeling more like... 5%, anywhere from basically 1% to 5% would be pretty fair. Because, like, if you're wearing, for example, uh, 200 mil gear, what, what can that get you, 200 mil gear-wise? Uh, I mean, obviously, God Swords, uh, Bandos Armor, Armadale Armor. Ancestral. Ancestral. So you're wearing those high-level gear, you pay a mil every time you die. Not in a place like Raids, because, you know, they already have penalties for that already, which is points, so... I guess that's okay, but like anywhere else where you normally would die, you know, like uh, in a dangerous, I would say any dangerous activity, right, where you die, you would, yeah, pay anywhere from 0 to 1 mil. So it's still the same range, but yeah, my percentage would be different, right? Currently, you can die multiple times, and the items piles will, you know, stay for an hour respectively. So I'm assuming you're not going to have multiple piles for your, you know, for your alternative, right? Or mm -hmm. are you okay with that? or having multiple piles. See, this is where the magical E word comes into play, engine work, if it would allow you to keep multiple piles and then pay for them all separately. Yeah, yeah. We should be able to have multiple piles, but it's it's not gonna be a deal breaker for me, I would say, but I feel like, you know, every time you die, even if you didn't pick up your original, you know, like pile, whether it's on the ground or, you know, something's holding it, it should still continue the same effect should you die, you know, again. Like, you'll still pay, you know, like, 1% to 5% whatever you currently have. So I guess if you die with nothing, you lose nothing, you know, the second time, trying to get your stuff back. But yeah, like, each individual pile will get an hour. So it'll be the same, you know, as, as we know it now, where, yeah, if you die multiple times, you still get one hour each, you know, of the uh, loot piles that you died with. But yeah, except we just incorporate the fee, so... And I could see other reasons, too, why you'd want to have more piles. Like, even just for example's sake, let's say you're doing God Wars at yeah. Armadale, for example. And you've accidentally put up the wrong prayer, you put Protect from Magic and don't realize it, and Kriara 2 shots you. So, you die, you have to go back with a sum of coins to go pay for the pile. You use your ecumenical key, walk into the room, and let's say for, like, you know, all intents and purposes, your internet goes out. Yeah. For a brief moment, and you disconnect. Yeah. Now that money you've got, let's say we don't have uh, multiple piles and it's only one, your items are just automatically gone when you were just trying to claim them. Yeah, exactly. And you have like, this new second pile yeah. that's just got coins in it. That would be yeah. seem a bit unfair. Um, and also, I would say that uh, you don't actually have to bring your coins. Like they'll just, they'll, it should just take the coins from yeah. you know your bank. Um, mm, because so. because here's the deal, right? Like um, one of the biggest questions once we have this type of you know. Uh, alternative in place is when do we pay the coins and how that's that's going to be really important but okay. if we if we do the pile system like we talked about though then i'm not sure how that's gonna you know like when it, with the question of when do we pay i'm not sure would it be automatically uh deducted the moment you die or should there be like an npc somewhere where... I actually like that idea, where it automatically is deducted when you die, and yeah. obviously the feature could be toggleable, where you can pay, let's say, 
uh, death in Lumbridge or Falador or wherever you're spawning. Yeah. You pay him, and he's mm -hmm. like, okay, your gravestone or whatever, your death pile is unlocked, and you go pick up your stuff freely. Yeah. Yeah, so so here here's the here's the deal, right? I like that. I do like that. There should be some guy, you know, in in the respawn points that tells you, hey, how many piles? You know, there's this x many piles and x amount of time on them, and you know, and then each one would have like a feature for you to buy back, you know, to unlock. But but the thing is, like, how do we like hold these piles? How do we encapsulate these piles on the ground exactly? You know, let's say we do have these NPCs. So let's say if you didn't pay, you know, the guy, then whatever's on the ground, there there will be like this little box where it will cover everything technically. I don't know if that engine work will, you know, require probably some engine work, whatever, right? So mm -hmm. so essentially if you didn't pay for that pile, there will be a little box that prevents you from taking anything. Now now what if you paid, right? So if you pay for that pile, then the box just disappears. You won't see it at all. It'll just be a regular loot pile. You'll still, you know, you'll just pick up your items the way you, you have been able to do it for this many years. You know, mm -hmm. the, the same so, way we've done it. Like yeah, that could, def that could definitely work in self the field. Like, you know, going to reclaim items after death instead of just talking to a guy and then he just dumps them in your inventory. Or your yeah, because that's weird. Because, you know, like, you still have to get your shit back, I feel like, you know. Yeah. For sure. Because, like, that's the classic... Uh, way to it you know you still have that you still have to venture through and get your stuff back like old times except you now know well you have items on the ground for an hour you paid your fee you learned your lesson to not take this risk or if you know you had an accident due to power outage or whatever i feel like we should still have that yeah exactly mm -hmm. yeah it can get pretty confusing so i'm gonna get some like nice bullet points for you guys so i think that proposal you know our combination uh of alternative is probably i would say the best way to do it because we can't afford to have too many timers anymore because if you did well you'll you'll most likely lose all your shit you know wherever you may die if you die at god wars now and you're not going to get your stuff back with the two minute timer i can guarantee you that you know so the main reason you have to remember is because of ddosing yeah and and, that's and yeah the, the reason yeah the, the reason why they have you know the 60 minute timer was because of ddosing I remember very vividly when uh, Corporal Beast came out in old school. That's when the DDoSing went ham, dude. Because like everybody would DDoS each other at Corp Lair just so they can get each other each other's stuff. So it was mm -hmm. insane. It was insane. And then it just uh, became a trend. You know, people started DDoSing everywhere. They're like, well, why why do it at Corp when I can do it anywhere? So we definitely have to make sure the items you know cannot be seen by other people no matter what. Uh, unless it's obviously PKing, which you know will always stay the way it is. But yeah, so it'll, it'll pretty much incorporate a lot of the you know what we currently have, except the payment feature and how to pay, when to pay, and stuff. Then there's the question of you know does does it help the economy? We can't factually say whether or not you know it does or doesn't because you know how we feel about the economy is, especially in a game in a video game environment, is essentially just an opinion. So. A fee just makes the game feel more punishing, and you know makes this game feel more genuine, right? Not not so watered down. And if you take risks, you actually pay the consequences if you fail, right? So that so that's really nice because yeah, right now everybody just doesn't care. There's no risk out there, so if there's no risk involved, then it doesn't feel like exactly like you're playing a game. It feels like you're just on a really calm ride. That's it. Yeah, because no like, bumps in the way. yeah, RuneScape felt so much more um, appealing and engaging and and whatnot when we did have some form form of punishment. And although you know this taxing when you die is nowhere near as punishing as it used to be, I think it will definitely bring some sense of thrill back because, you know, uh, I mean, it, it's kind of selfish of me to say because having this fee will really, you know, make people think twice before they go bring expensive gear or before you know newbie players start thinking about bossing because I remember you know when I when we had the two minute tires and I was a noob you know I mean honestly even my uh, high level friends that brought me to like God Wars and stuff for the first time they, they didn't bring like the craziest gear I you know what I mean the best of the best unless we were together like just because if you died well man you really don't want to be losing your stuff and in this case, you know, if you die, you really don't want to be losing like a mill or something. So it'll bring back that like sense of like, you know, feeling scared 
before you embark on like your first bossing and stuff but but yeah it, it's something that this game has really been left without for a very long time and also uh, a lot of people are you know soloing bosses nowadays right because honestly one of the biggest reasons why people are just engaging in like soloing everything nowadays is because even if you died well you don't lose anything you just get your stuff back so i feel like it'll encourage more cooperation between players instead of just like i want to solo everything you know like even for like a new guy it's like i don't know much about bossing but i see everyone solo let me do it and obviously he knows that there's not much risk aside from just getting his stuff back so if you have this fee like really it'll, it'll you know encourage people to really cooperate together especially for newer players that aren't so familiar with bossing you know they'll, they'll really think about trying to get somebody to go with them because man they don't want to die a bit of that old culture just just nowhere near as crazy but still you know you'll get a bit of it you know the taste of how it used to be back then without actually like destroying your entire bank should you die you know you pay your 500k whatever you'll be more careful next time you know bring a friend next time you know you'll you won't underestimate the boss so much you won't take so many risks next time you know every time you go bossing i hope you, you keep your hp to like 80 hp or something right but yeah with the fee you'll you'll start remembering oh fuck if i'm 4 hp and i got no food i'm not risking it i'm out you know get that feeling back for sure exactly like if you're mm -hmm. against bandos as you just said the dude's got four, like you know 20 hp but you've got 40 and any combination of damage could kill you back in the day let's say when i was soloing bandos with like you know varox armor or like other tank gear i would not risk that because i would lose that stuff like yeah. let's say today i'm doing it with like you know all best in slack gear and if i die then potentially you know 100 mil of items is lost on death and i have to pay a mil to get it back yeah is it really worth me risking a mil to get probably just a 20k drop hell no i'm porting out if you guys never had that experience before you're gonna love it well you're gonna hate it but you're gonna realize you're gonna love it it'll make this game feel much more meaningful for sure I, I would hope. things feel more, way more rewarding. Uh, yeah, exactly. Way more rewarding as well. Forgot about that. Big topic, probably the last big topic relating to death mechanic we have to talk about is Ultimate Iron Man. I mean, even if we bring out this alternative we speak of, should Ultimate Iron Man have to pay every time they die? Because uh, a lot of people probably don't know how Ultimate Iron Man works because it's such a niche like playstyle. But uh, essentially, if you even want to remotely even do anything convenient on the ultimate iron man you have to suicide a lot like yeah for example uh my, my friend ultimate iron man vera um settled you know ultimate iron man link these guys have their youtube channels they're so f if pretty much any fee involved you know death mechanic comes through because yeah every time they die they ha they're gonna have to pay some crazy fee and they have to do it they have to die in order to play which is kind of f***ing crazy if you think about it but yeah ultimate iron man have to actually die a lot for me personally, I feel as though they probably shouldn't shouldn't have to pay a fee for when they die because, like, Ultimate Iron Man is, in my opinion, so ace to play. And if you had to pay every time you died on top of all the, you know, limitations that they already have, such as not being able to use the bank, I think every Ultimate Iron Man would probably just quit. Like, that game mode would be dead. If you think about it, like, they have to die to empty out the looting bag. Like, if this change were to go through, they'd probably do more planning than they already do. Like, that game mode is all about planning way into the future. So, let's say you want to empty, like, you know, your stuff out to get an inventory so you can do some skilling. You can't just, like, hop around like that anymore, because every time you die, like, let's say Ver, for example, who's got all high-end gear, he has way over 100 mil, so if even if it's 1%, he's paying 1 mil for it. Do you really want to be paying 1 mil every single death that you do? Considering he probably has to die, like, once a day just to do anything so that would 100 percent kill the game mode i don't know if maybe that restriction should just be taking off of that type of account or i don't know that's like so tricky to work around like iron man mode regular it's it's a bit of the opposite where you know every update and stuff has really you know significantly made uh regular iron man a lot quicker in terms of leveling bossing but ultimate iron man like even all these years of updates has still kept this mode super aids well they should be playing under the rules that they've been playing for you know these past three plus years even yeah. if the you know fee costs came through in any form i, I would say it's, it's a controversial i know people are gonna be like oh my god you're giving this mode like some sort of exception you know but trust me man if you've seen ultimate iron man gameplay you'll realize like yeah 
we're not gonna give them a tax fee every time they die because that's just fucked up, man, honestly. Yeah, even if they chose to limit themselves, they made this account when that death mechanic was like that. So if you take that away, the game mode becomes literally unplayable. It's ridiculous. Oh, cool, I hit 90 wood cutting. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot, yeah, we so... just finished right before midnight, yep. Beautiful. Yeah, but yeah, the, the video that's playing is just Verve's latest video. As you can see, he's doing suicide to transfer his stuff over and over again, and yeah, it's so ace. He has to get looting bag every time he dies. Yeah, I'd love to see what your following thinks about like all these changes as well. Like not even just the death mechanics, like the proposed changes. Like, cause I mean, you can go on Reddit and read a bunch of like you know people yelling and circle jerking and whatnot, but yeah. I'd actually like to see like you know what a Wellsta community thinks about like these kinds of changes and like you know what their suggestions would be one of you know the biggest strengths about the channel most people don't you know just throw memes in the comment section we actually like talk you know so that's really awesome so do take advantage of that at least from the last one i had some really good you know conversations and discussions with just viewers so that's great uh, maybe we'll do another one in the summer i don't know if they have any big plans i'll let you guys know ahead of time you know when we want to talk about another big uh, content discussion video. Should we do some sellout shit like we did last time? <laughs> 5k likes and cold one will do a face reveal. <laughs> yeah, you guys want to see cold one's face? Scrumptious. Alright, okay, see you guys. Bye.